might involve you taking a picture, you know, uh, yourself, or recording video, or whatever. But it might involve finding it from one of these other sources. All right, let's move into a little more nuts and bolts. Here's my aim. My aim is to talk uh, a while today, to, to, to lecture pretty much the whole time today. Um, and then next time um, will probably be a little bit of a lecture to maybe tighten, you know, tie up some loose ends that, that I didn't talk about today. And it'll be a chance for you to just, just have a blast playing around with some of these image editing uh, things. How many of you have done, would you say, no image editing at all? Never edited an image in your life? How many of you have done just minimal? All right. How many would you say you've done a moderate amount? How many would you say that you're, you're an expert? All right. Excellent. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about image editing, and I'm going to explore uh, a, a couple different tools in, with regards to this. All right. Um, I take images and I edit images and I do it for a bunch of different reasons. All right. I will say, just like a golfer wouldn't necessarily only have one club in their golf bag, I won't necessarily only use one editor. There's sometimes I use one editor, sometimes I use another. All right. Photoshop and its open source equivalent, the GIMP, um, are sort of the industrial strength editing. You can do some great stuff in them, and, and we'll play around with that. But I do want uh, a lot of this for you folks to explore, find things out, show other people in the class, and do that sort of thing. All right? But you can do a lot of stuff. You know, I made a birthday card for my daughter, I, uh, whose birthday is today. Uh, that has one of our cats that I took his fur, the cat's fur, and put a mustache on it, you know, so the cat looks like it has a mustache. And, and I put a top hat and a monocle on it. This, client, this cat just looks like he is classy, you know. He just looks like he would be walking around in, in, a, in a top hat. And, you know, like. So we always joke about that. So I made that. And given the fact that I spent, you know, you know half hour on it, maybe tops, maybe not even that, I thought it was decent for what I was doing. So you could do all kinds of crazy things like that. All right. Um, back at my old job, someone took my head and put it on the body of a bodybuilder. All right. <laughs> and uh, you know, it, it looked it looked reasonably good. Uh, I've been I've been photoshopped into a photo of '80s uh, pop star Gary Newman, who, whose music I don't like at all. Someone did that kind of just as a, a, a joke, like, oh, here you are at a Gary Newman concert. That's hilarious. You know? uh, the bottom line is you can do these things, but you know what? That's not what you're necessarily doing every day. There's reasons that you edit photographs, and there's different reasons. And as the, the guy on TV, what's the day? I think Norm Abram says, right tool for the right job. You, know? you could use a sledgehammer to crack a walnut. But that's not necessarily what you need for that particular job. It may go better to use a simpler tool for that. So what I typically do, most of my editing I do either through uh, my Max iPhoto application for just a very basic, rudimentary sort of editing 101. The sort of thing that every web developer should be familiar with doing. And we'll talk about what those kinds of things are in a minute. I use... The, so I use Max iPhoto for that, and then I use the GIMP if I want to do something heavy duty. All right. I guess in thinking about it, and again, these aren't like cut and dried categories, so um, these are just more for description. I would say that you edit photos for three reasons. Three main reasons. I would say number one, you want to reformat the photo somehow. Make it smaller, maybe. <clears throat> maybe make it into a square, right? You want some thumbnails and you want all your thumb excuse me, all your thumbnails to look the same. And some of your image are are landscape and some of them are some more landscape and some of them are portrait. 
and therefore you edit them all to be squares. You're not really doing anything fancy, you're just, you're just reformatting it. Changing formats, changing something from a bitmap to a JPEG, or a TIFF file to a JPEG, or whatever. Those are sort of the basic reformatting things. All right? You edit photos to fix them. All right? In other words, something's wrong with them. You want to fix them. What are some of the things that you might fix in a photo? <coughs> Red eye. Red eye is, is one, right? Most editing tools have a tool to fix that if there's a flash and your eyes look red, all right, um, then you can get rid of that. So that's one thing to fix. So another thing to fix. Contrast. Contrast. For example, if you took a picture in the bright sunlight, it might, it might look a little washed out. All right? Now, one thing, one thing I want to emphasize, now this is not a photography class, all right? But um, how do I want to say this? Fixing a photo isn't as good as getting it right the first time. So therefore, you take a photo you, you know, you want to learn as much as you can about, again, depending on how much you're going to do this, but learn as much as you can about your equipment and how to take things and so on and so forth. Yeah, you can fix them, but it's best if you nail it the first time, right, in my mind. What are some other ways that you could fix a photo? robes and the red and yellows and vivid oranges of the, the, the sun, 
uh, really comes into play. And he does that, you know, and you don't even notice it really unless you're looking for it, but it really helps to create the mood. So what I'm talking about now is fixing it for, um, um, just to fix it. Um, you can apply some of these same techniques in an artistic sense. That's why I want to say it's not really cut and dry things, you know. You can adjust the color artistically or you can do it um, for that. What's another way that you can fix colors or change the colors besides the white balance? Yes? Exposure. Exposure, right. Um, you can expose a shot. Again, you can make it look like there's more light or make it look like there is less light. Again, it's not as good as getting the exposure right, but sometimes you got to take what you got, all right, and you have to deal with it. The other thing is the saturation of how vivid the colors are. Uh, zero saturation of the image would be a grayscale then, black and white. Um, you could pump up the saturation of the uh, colors and get really bright colors, like like you use Tide in your laundry, like everyone in the world is using Tide in their laundry, and they really get the, the bright colors. If any of you have seen the movie Amelie, uh, or have seen the TV show Pushing Daisies, both those shows sort of create a, a fairy tale look through having just really bright, pumped up, highly saturated colors. All right, other ways that we can fix things. Yes? Sharpness. Sharpness, a little bit. Anything else? Yes? Serbia. The Serbia island. And the Serbia basically takes it not black and white, but makes it like looking at teeth. Okay. It's on the CB. It's on the CB. Yeah, CB. The hue? Yeah, with the, the hue. CPU would be an example of that. You can actually fix flaws in, in, in pictures, right? In fact, um, um, you know, you look at, you know, you, you look at pictures, um, you know, the fashion industry gets a lot of uh, criticism for airbrushing their pictures or altering their pictures in one way or another to make a model look taller or thinner. Um, that, I guess that's a whole other business, but you can do it for less sort of sinister ways uh, in it. Um, you know, I've had the case where I've taken a picture out a window and there's some dust on the window. You know, oh, it's a beautiful picture, but I don't want people to know that, that my windows are dirty. All right? You can actually, in some cases, again, you can remove some of those small flaws. All right? Now, Again, is it going to look as good? Will it be noticeable if someone really looks or blows up the picture and looks pixel by pixel? Maybe, but it might be, might be good enough. All right. Most of these things are things that I would look for in a simple editor. All right. Some of these other ones, like removing blemishes or flaws, are maybe a little more advanced. But reformatting, being able to crop, resize, fix red eye, play around with the color, with the tint, with the white balance. These are all things that I would I would hope that an, an average photograph would would uh, or an average photo editor would have a simple one. These for the most parts are the kinds of things that I would use um, iPhoto for. I really wish for this class I had a Mac here. I guess I could have brought my laptop in, but I didn't think of that until just this moment. All right. Uh, that's what I use iPhoto for. There is a good free tool from our friends at Google called Picasa that works very similarly to um, um, iPhoto that does a lot of the same features. And has the extra feature that you're allowed to organize your photos into albums. All right. Um, one problem with digital photos is it's easy to take a million of them, right? It doesn't cost you anything more to take. Once you bought the camera, exactly, yeah, you can take it. You know, I know when I have my digital camera, you know, I see something, oh, I'll take a stamp at it, right? If I had to pay for film for every one of those things, forget. You know, I wouldn't take a, a tenth of the pictures that I do, all right? But then the problem comes finding. So that's one thing.
thing that Picasso does. And with Picasso, again, uh, we'll talk a little bit about internally how it works, but it is important to keep an original of your image for all the reasons that I said before in terms of quality, making it smaller. You can't take a smaller image and make it bigger. You can't take a bigger image and make it smaller. You can't, take, you can't easily take a black and white image and make it color, but you can take a color image and make it black and white. So let's go and let's download Picasso. It should only take a minute here. And let's spend just a minute looking at it. Picasso also has a component for um, sharing your images as well, which, if you're so inclined, is a nice feature. Let's look at some of these basic functionalities and that I described and, and see how Picasso does this. It's been a while since I used Picasso, but um, unless they've radically changed it, one of the virtues of Picasso is that it's very, very, very simple. While we're doing that, we'll talk about the fourth way, third way that you would edit images. And that would be for artistic reasons. In other words, I'm saying artistic, but I, I'm talking about sort of the heavy-duty industrial strength um, photo manipulation, putting my head on someone else's body and that sort of thing, all right? Making a collage out of images, you know, uh, uh, making an image um, black and white except for one element that you make color. That, that's a popular uh, thing to do. Those sorts of things. I would, I would say, are, are sort of artistic reasons. And again, that's what we're going to look to a lot of the heavy-duty um, image manipulation programs for. All right. Um, your average web developer should be able to do these sorts of things. And then if they can do some of the more artistic things using uh, a photo editor, all the better. All right. And that comes with time, depending on your interests and, and abilities. Again, you know, for some people it's fun to do. For other people, they're not terribly interested in it. Let me install, finish installing Picasso. And we'll take a quick tour of it. Now you, your mileage may vary as they say, but again, I like to have um, a couple photo editors uh, available. At my disposal. It allows you to search your computer for stuff that you already have and it will find images out there. I'm only going to search my documents, my pictures, and the desktop so it doesn't take terribly long. And use then uh, blah blah blah. We'll take all of these. Finish. Let's go and import the sample images. I'm not sure why that didn't do it. It didn't do that because there are no sample images in my images in my pictures. Well, let's go out to Flickr, and let's find a Creative Commons image that we can play with.
Oh, you know what? I didn't go in the sample pictures folder. That's my mistake. Yeah, where, where is Libraries. the sample? Libraries? Libraries. Libraries. Ah, thank you. There we go. Okay, there's our image. Alright, so I can go here and I can start editing it. So it's importing it, and I can bring it up and start editing it, maybe. Unfortunately, are out of time. All right, I don't see what's going on with that. We are unfortunately out of time. We'll pick up on this tomorrow, our uh, next class, and we'll probably spend just a bit of time on this. And because I do want to devote some time next time to uh, the GIMP and Photoshop. I will make sure you have time to play with this. I think it's important to go in and, you know, most of, most of what I've learned about photo editing was not doing anything purposeful at all, all right? It's just going in and mess around and it's like, oh, what, you know, how can I give my cat a mustache, that sort of thing. All right, we'll see you over in lab.